untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm taking a look at a red green bard class combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and upon popular request it's time to revisit the archetype and of course the build around card of our deck is going to be bard class. The two mana class enchantment on level 1 says legendary creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them. Then we can pay a red and a green to get it to level 2, which is where things start heating up, as a legendary spells we cast cost a red and a green less to cast, this effect only reduces the amount of colored mana we pay, and then if we can pay 5 mana to get it to level 3, things really start getting out of hand, because whenever we cast a legendary spell, we exile the top 2 cards of our library, and we may play them this turn. So in combination with the cost reduction from level 2, we can quickly start casting a ton of legendary spells in the same turn, especially if we combine it with Burgi, God of Storytelling, the 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary creature god, saying whenever we cast a spell we get to add red mana to our mana pool, and until end of turn, we don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. And then we can also potentially play Burgi as the Horn of Bounty, a 5 mana legendary artifact that lets us discard a card to exile the top two cards of our library that we get to play until end of turn. So the Horn of Bounty gives us a bit of flexibility in case we need an extra card draw engine, maybe we don't have a level 3 bard class, but Burgi adding that red mana is what allows us to potentially combo off in one big turn in combination with a level 3 bard class, as we get to potentially cast a legendary creature for maybe 0 or just 1 mana, add red mana so we can cast another one and basically keep going through the deck until we eventually find Goro Goro, Disciple of Ryusei, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary goblin samurai from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and we can pay one red mana to give creatures we control haste until end of turn. So now all of a sudden all those legendary creatures we just played get to attack. Another important addition from Kamigawa is a mirror box, a 3 mana rare artifact saying the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents we control. So now all of a sudden we can play multiple copies of our legendary creatures, which is especially relevant for Burgi, adding additional red mana, making it easier to combo off in one big turn. Then the legendary creatures we control also get plus one plus one, and each non-token creature we control gets plus one plus one for each other creature we control with the same name as that creature, so more power and toughness is always useful. Then another way to generate mana in our deck is with a Sika, God of the Tree, a 1-4 legendary creature god with vigilance that can tap for one mana of any color, and says other legendary creatures we control have vigilance and also get to tap to add one mana of any color, so that can help ramp out more creatures, helps with the level 3 bard class to combo off in one big turn, also being able to give our creatures haste with Goro Goro when we have a Sika in play means that every creature we play essentially pays for itself, especially if we also have a Burgi, so that can uh, quickly let us combo off. Then we can also potentially play the Prismatic Bridge, thanks to the mana fixing that Esika provides, which is a legendary enchantment that at the beginning of our upkeep reveals cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature or planeswalker card that we get to put straight onto the battlefield. So another perk of having four copies of Esika is that sometimes we get to play Prismatic Bridge, so similar to Burgi giving us that flexibility. Then another new card is Kodama of the West Tree, a 3-3 a legendary spirit with the reach, saying modified creatures we control have trample, and a modification counts as an equipment, an aura we control, or a counter that's put on our creature, so a plus one plus one counter counts as a modification for one of our creatures, so we've got a ton of ways to accomplish that, and then whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, so that's the reason why we have so many basic lands, as opposed to playing a ton of pathways to maybe facilitate the prismatic bridge. And then we also have the full playset of Magda, Brazen Outlaw, which gets to make a treasure when she becomes tapped, so a great combo with Esika, as we can now tap Magda for mana, as well as make a treasure, so she essentially makes two mana. And then a Plark Dean of Chaos is another new addition that I didn't include in my previous build, as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary creature can tap it to discard a card and draw a card, so it potentially gives us some card selection early, can get rid of additional legendaries in case we don't have the mirror box in play. And then the 5 mana activated ability lets us tap Plark to reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a non-legendary non-land card with mana value 3 or less, we may cast that card without paying its mana cost. 
and the only non-legendary cards that fit that description are going to be either Bard class, which is of course one of the key cards we want to find, and then the Mirror Box. So two great cards to find with Plarg in case we have the extra mana. And then we have the full playset of Targnar as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two, that with pack tactics can potentially give our team plus 1 plus 0 if we enabled it and can also double its power with the activated ability. But the main reason we include Targnar is that we can potentially cast it for free with a level 2 bard class. So we can play turn 2 bard class, turn 3 level it up and then potentially play something like Magda for 1 mana and a Targnar for free which will both come into play with plus 1 counters. So that's a powerful start. And then especially if we also have a Burgi in play, Targnar can potentially generate additional mana and becomes kind of a ritual effect which is also very powerful and then the last couple cards we haven't covered yet at 4 mana include the full playset of Halana and Elena, the partners. 2-3 a legendary creature with first strike and reach, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on another target creature you control, where X is the partner's power, and that creature also gains haste until end of turn, so the partners are a natural fit in our deck. Great synergy with Kodama, letting us modify our creatures. The haste potentially lets us snap a Sika for mana right away, or Magda can make a treasure, so it also kind of gives us a mana advantage and it's just an individually powerful card that some mono white decks are even splashing for so the fact that we can potentially just play it for two mana thanks to a level two bard class makes it an easy inclusion in our deck and then a two copies of Arlen as a Planeswalker that can make a pair of wolf tokens. And the plus one also potentially lets us play creatures at instant speed. And they will also come into play with plus one plus one counters. So more synergy with cards like Kodama and the partners. Which also, by the way, come into play with an extra counter thanks to Bard class. Meaning they now add three counters to a creature instead of just two. So there's a ton of synergy there too. Especially once Mirror Box hits the battlefield and we can have multiple partners in play. And then a mana base, lots of basic lands to go with Kodama. We've got the new legendary lands, which also get a nice discount from controlling legendary creatures. So we can potentially channel them for just one mana, the red one making a pair of 1-1 tokens, and Boseju dealing with artifacts, enchantments, or non-basic lands. And then our creature line of choice is Den of the Bugbear, times two, and then our Pathway and Rockfall Veil. Vale. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Any hand with Bard class is difficult to turn down, but this one has some additional goodies. Could be up against Mono White, so something like Portable Hole could answer our class enchantment, sadly. But still gonna go for it. It's gonna be a Monk. Into a code spell cleric, that's fine. So we'll level up. And then play Magda, I think. Or we could play Plarg, which I'm happy to trade off since we have a backup. I guess that's also reasonable. A Luminarch for an extra counter. And Homestead Courage. Still fine to trade for a Code Spell. Right, back up Magda. There's also an argument for playing Burgi as Horn of Bounty. Although we might just level a Bard class instead. A level the Bard class is still more vulnerable to potential Skyclave Apparitions and Portable Hole, whereas the Horn of Bounty is very difficult for Mono White to answer. So there's arguments for both. But I do want to get on the board this turn. So definitely going for Plarg and Magda. So I have to decide if I also want to commit Burgi or keep Horn. I think we might keep Horn. And then, yeah, just play Plarg and Magda. And we're fine, potentially, trading off Magda. So the Aspirant could pump itself. Not really interested in double blocking. Right, another Homestead Courage. So point with a very lurker version. But they're almost empty-handed, at least. 
Yeah, we'll trade off Magda, take six. And now there's still the option to level up Bard class. And then it seems like our opponent doesn't have an answer for it, so next turn I get to potentially combo off with uh, Burgi into more spells. That is tempting. Whereas if I play Horn, I can still potentially play Magda, and then next turn discard to Horn to start doing some stuff. That's also reasonable. I think the highest upside is Bard class, and now that our opponent has shown no interest in removing it, I think I'm okay with it. Could even activate a Plarg, but finding a second Bard class wouldn't be all that helpful now. So let's try it. Can also use Plarg to discard and draw, but I'm happy with the cards in hand. Trapid Adversary can be pumped. So Plarg is jumping here. Alright, big turn coming up. Kodama's not bad. So probably want to keep green mana available. Nisika's great, so play, I guess, Isika. Find another one and the mirror box. So I think I'm just gonna go with Magda into mirror box here, most likely. If I mirror box, then I won't have the mana to play Isika. Unless we hit a Targnar here to make an extra mana. Gorogoro Goro and Targnar, alright. Well, things might be happening. So... Can play Mirror Box. Floater Red, play Targnar. Yeah, I think this is going somewhere. Play Kodama. Back up Magda. Plark we can play for free. Another Targnar makes more mana, so we can play Partners. Still haven't found a second Burgi. Well, there she is, and a Targnar, so we can cast Burgi and completely combo off here. Oh yes. Opponent hasn't seen Gorogoro in action yet, but they will pretty soon. Gorogoro giving the team haste means they can also tap for mana thanks to Isika. So I can fix for green just in case that would be necessary. But it's not going to be. I mean, might as well see how far we can go here. Another Burgi. Another partners. And they're also getting bigger with the mirror box. And there's no risk of decking because Bard class exiles cards instead of drawing, so there's no risk of drawing from an empty library. Yeah, I think if I give my team haste, our opponent's probably going to concede, so just want to push it as far as I can. As opposed to trying to play additional copies of Bard class to give extra plus one counters, which would probably be the optimal play for trying to deal as much damage as possible. 
All right, six cards left, so I think we've reached our limit here. That can make some more wolves. Our last burgy. And then we can make lots of dragons with Goro Goro as well. Well, this is pretty cool. Another mirror box, just because. Give the team hastes. Could play a prismatic bridge too, but let's just attack. And then we want to stack all the damage onto the same Targnar, so we can double its damage. I think that's going to be dealing the most damage. Attack. Targnar triggers a bunch. And then we want to activate this as much as possible. Numbers are getting awfully small, but large at the same time. Magda makes more mana, that's useful. I appreciate her opponent sticking around for this. How much are we at? 30,000 power? Well, this is gonna make for a good thumbnail, I guess. Ah, I think that's it. Just uh, 120,000 powered Targnar is gonna be the end of it. Although, sadly, our opponent dies to first strike before we actually get to deal that damage. Alright, awesome. Alright, we're on the play with double part class in our opener, so gotta keep. Could use an extra land or two, but uh, for now, we'll see how this plays out. Probably play this on green in case we draw a Sika, which is green hungry. And Burgi already produces extra red. Put on black white with a turn to Aspirants. Alright, so wouldn't be able to play anything after leveling Bard class. But I think that's still the play here. Still hoping for land so I can play Burgi and a couple one drops in the same turn. Opponent hits us for three. All right. So time for Burgi. Into Magda. Into Plarg. Into Goro Goro. Give the team hastes. And probably smash with everyone. Then we still have our horn we can play next turn using our treasure. Opponent trades for Goro Goro. Thirst kills Plarg. And an adversary 2-3 death touch on defense. Alright, so our opponent is setting up their defenses, which is when we can try and pull ahead with our card draw engines. So this turn, I think playing Horn is gonna be the way to go. Make a red mana. Discard Den of the Bugbear. 
can maybe find an untapped land too here. Okay, now we can potentially trade off Magda since we get to turn it into a treasure. And we've got to back up Magda anyway. Alright, so do I want to play a Sika first or Magda? Um, don't think it matters too much. And then we can tap Burgi for mana right away to help us play a second Bard class. Which I maybe actually should have played first, so I could have uh, given a few extra counters to my legendaries here. Invoke Despair forces me to sacrifice a creature, which will be Magda. An enchantment, which is going to be the level 1 Bard class. And our opponent gets to draw. So that was pretty effective, but luckily we had a backup class in play. Opponent's still in no position to attack. And... Yeah, I'm tempted to just level 3 this Bard class, hoping there's no Alter Invoke Despair. And then wait on playing Arlen until we have a level 3 Bard class. Alternatively, I could just... Uh, Use the horn or play Arlen and be satisfied with our planeswalker. I think uh, leveling up is going to be the highest upside if it works out. Also, another invoke despair would be brutal. It's going to be a legion angel. That's acceptable. Aspirin pumps itself, and we'll see if they want to start attacking. They don't. Partners is nice. So, yeah, we'll start there. Can play Arlen. See what else we pick up. Magda's essentially free. Targnar makes a mana. And it's night, so we could even add mana with Arlen here if we want to. Which is probably going to be the play. More Targnars. So we wouldn't mind finding a mirror box at this point. Kodama, more Targnars. Don't have a Plarg yet. Alright, so a bunch of creatures we already have, so I guess we'll cycle a Targnar. Can cycle Magda. Although we could also give her haste, although if we find a Goro Goro we might be able to win this turn. So I think we keep going. Also haven't played a land yet. So... Next, probably go for Targnar then. Finds a backup Bard class. So now what? Probably another Partners. But I might want to add Red and Green first. Play Bard class, so they come into play with an extra counter. Another Targnar. More Plargs. Sika we can play after maybe playing a Forests, or we can play another Partners. I guess we can tap this Sika for green, play Sika. There's Goro Goro to give the team haste, as well as the Mirror Box, which is what I was waiting for. 
So now we can play Burgi number two and really start making more mana. Burgi number three. Oh, yes. Play Goro Goro. Which can give the team hastes. Can give hastes multiple times. And our opponent's just super dead here. Awesome. Managed to combo off against Black White. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a potentially exciting hand with a Bard class, of course. So we'll try it. Hopefully, pick up some more lands so we can uh, start double spelling with a level 2 Bard class. Delver of Secrets, okay. So it could be a pretty aggressive deck. Delver does not transform, so that buys us more time. So we can level a Bard class and maybe play a Plark here over Goro Goro. Delver transforms, revealing a Shadow Skull smashing. So the race is on. But next turn we can potentially go a Sika into Arlen, adding a ton of power and toughness to the board. Alright, Royal Eruption kills Plark, so now we'll need a mana for that to work. Partners instead. Still pretty decent, so we can play Partners and Goro Goro. And see how that goes. Although opponent might have a fading hope here. Alright, partner's trigger, so no fading hope. Hit for six. Eh, never mind, Fading Hope bounces Goro Goro. A little surprise, maybe they have a different removal spell for the partners. It's gonna be the Tormented Prophets to provide card advantage. And Delver stays back. Alright, so now what? Can play a Sika, put three counters on it, giving Isika haste so she can attack and tap for mana second main. That seems like a good start. And then the partners could attack, although they're just going to get blocked by the Tormented Prophet. And then we essentially have three mana here. So I could play Arlen and maybe Magda. Tormented Prophet finds Play With Fire, which can take out Magda. Could potentially even play Prismatic Bridge next turn if we want to. Play with fire kills Magda, as expected. And Delver goes face. Visionary is next, and another Delver. Okay. So start by plusing here. And then I could play Goro Goro, give it haste, attack with it, and then we can either activate Goro Goro's ability to make a dragon, or 
I could try and cast Prismatic Bridge second main. Both of those options are appealing. We'll see how they block first. Right, Visionary chumps Goro Goro. I think making a 5-5 five, five flyer is probably the safest play here. Then we don't need to worry about Delvers hitting us as much. Still have our Wolves on defense. Adversary, they can potentially pay the 3 to flashback a burn spell. Thing that's still gonna leave them a little short. I guess Fading Hope on the Dragon also works. Delver attacks. And our opponent seems pretty dead here. Put a counter on the Wolf. Attack with all. And once again, we can make a dragon. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No Bard class, but we do have a decent start otherwise, with Plark potentially being able to find Bard class later. Although I'm gonna give turn 2 Magda a try. Opponent some blue whites and a spirited companion, so some sort of enchantment deck. Well, there's Bard class. Still in time to be quite effective. So I could sacrifice Magda here, just so I can level up Bard class right away. That might be worth it. I'll level a Bard class, and then I can play a Targnar for free. Alternatively, I could keep it until next turn to play after Burgi to generate one extra mana. I think I want the extra board presence here. And I can still play Burgi and then essentially empty out my hand, including Goro Goro making red mana so we can give the team haste. So yeah, next turn could be quite effective. Restoration is fine. Alright, time to combo off. Burgi as a creature. Play Plarg. Make a red. Goro Goro makes a red. Give the team haste. And we even get to enable pack tactics. So our opponent's at three. And we'll see how they get out of this. If we draw additional lands, we can start using Plarg to discard and draw, or just use the 5-man ability, trying to find a mirror box or additional Bard class. Or we can just level our current Bard class, so we can start uh, generating extra card advantage. Repel the Vile on Burgi, that works. Still leaves them very dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. No Bard class, but Plark can maybe find it, especially in combination with a Seek and Magda generating more mana. Let's see what we're up against. Some sort of blue deck. So if Magda survives, we can play a Sika and make two mana, basically. But might as well attack first. And then... 
make a red. And I could play Plarg here, maybe. So next turn we could activate it in the hopes of finding either Bard class. Even the mirror box wouldn't be bad. Opponent on a blue-green ramp deck. So they could be ramping into something like Cyclone Summoner, which eventually bounces our entire board. Something we would prefer to avoid. So, Azusa's Many Journeys, playing an extra land, and Sky Turtle bounces Plarg. Alright, that's fine. So, start by attacking. And then... Still have a couple options on what to play next. There's an argument for Arlen and then plus, so I can play creatures at instant speed to synergize with Kodama as well. Um, alternatively, just go Plarg plus Kodama. Kind of like the idea of Arlen. Just plus. And then I can Plarg at instant speed. Glorious Sunrise, okay. Could make more mana, gain life, or draw cards. Alrighty. So, activate Plark, probably gonna be step one. Find Bard class. And then I could level up Bard class. And then do I want to make Wolf Tokens or plus Arlen? Kind of still like plusing here. And then I could play Targnar at instant speed to potentially ambush Azusa. Now they could ramp into something big and scary, thanks to the extra mana from Glorious Sunrise. So that's the main concern. Alright, opponent's just gonna draw. Azusa attacks. Let's see if Targnar can ambush her successfully. We can. Another many journeys to play an extra land. And yeah, now Kodama could potentially find a couple lands right away. Witness the future, putting back Sky Turtle. That all happens. And now the plan is to combo off with our Bard class, hopefully. So, step one. Probably tap Magda for mana. Although maybe Asika first, in case uh, we can deal more damage with Magda. So level up. I guess we don't have something like Burgi in play to give us a mana discount. So I guess I wouldn't be able to necessarily find a Goro Goro give the team haste. So at that point I might be better off attacking. Although I would like to have Kodama in play before I do, so I think we still level a Bard class. And then might as well tap Magda for the extra mana. And maybe a Sika as well, so I can maybe find a land of Bard class. And then Arlen might be time to make wolf tokens. Or we can still plus. Um... I guess we'll go for uh, the plus still. Play Kodama. Did find a land. So let's attack. Bonus at 9. Get to search up two lands.
And then I play Magda to potentially keep going. Right, there's Bergy. So we can play her. And then if I find another Targnar, I can maybe still use a channel ability here. Although I guess channel only works if you discard it from your hands. So, all right, that ends our turn. But we still have a nice board presence here. So if we can dodge a Cyclone Summoner, we should be in business. And even if they do have it, by searching up those two extra lands, it's going to be easier to redeploy my hands now. Alright, there it is. Alright, step one, play Bard class. I think, yes. A love, love Bard class. Play Burgi. And then play Arlen. Which can plus. You wanna fight me and, my Wait. and then I could potentially cast a whole bunch of spells in the opponent's turn to play around another Cyclone Summoner. Although I guess that's gonna be tricky because, yeah, if they bounce Bard class, I don't get the mana discount anymore. So I don't think that actually works. And then we can play Targnar, play Kodama. And play the other one drops. Right, so we're back on the board. As if nothing happens. Witness a future. So at least no second cyclone summoner, which would have been the main concern. And then we can level 3 bard class to keep going. So I like my position. And there's a glorious sunrise once again. It's gonna gain three. But I don't think our opponent's getting another turn if uh, we draw well at least. And even on boards with Targnar, we might be able to get there. Okay, level of Bard class. Plus Arlen. Play Isika. And that's where the fun starts. Mirror box right off the bat. So we can play that, although it's not going to trigger Bard class, so maybe we wait on it. Go for partners first. There's Goro Goro. So that should already do it. Alright, looks like our opponent may have disconnected, so we can combo in peace. So, I guess we could give the team haste, but for now I can still tap Magda for mana. Play my mirror box. So I can have another Burr game play. And then keep going. Now they're partners. More Magdas. And we're just not very likely to fizzle out here. So we should be able to cast the rest of our deck. Let's see if we can improve upon our 120,000 damage. So let's say we give the team haste to make some green mana so I can play additional bard classes. Does that matter? I guess the extra counters on future Targnars could be helpful. And I guess it would also help with the partners getting more power. 
So maybe it is still worth it in the grand scheme of things. So the team has haste, tap our smallest creature. There's not many small creatures, but I guess a Sika for green, so we can play another Bard class. And then I guess I could use a little bit more green mana here. So next smallest creature, I guess, is Plarg. And then now probably play Targnar. Which finds more Targnars. And uh, let's see here. Tap this for green again. So I can play Sika. In case we find another Bard class first. So this Targnar comes into play with the maximum amount of plus one counters. There's another Bard class. So, tap Goro Goro for green. Play Bard class. And this final Targnar is the one that's gonna get doubled a few times. As we now have all four Bard classes in play. Hmm, I guess I forgot about Arlen, so we could have maybe still had a bigger Targnar if I played slightly differently, but oh well. And then I guess we'll make some wolves. Or maybe plusing to play partners is still better. No, our opponent came back and they conceded. So we didn't get to find out if we got to beat our previous record. All right, so we'll have to be satisfied with the win instead. So yeah, I went undefeated with Bard class. So the deck definitely impressed me a lot. In all honesty, we also didn't face too many of the tier one decks in standard at the moment. Also hard to say what the tier one decks are since the new set's only been out for a week but something like the green-white enchantments deck, black-white token sacrifice, maybe a Naya humans deck, those are probably among the more popular and powerful ones, which we didn't end up facing today. But still, the Bard class showed a lot of promise, and being able to combo, especially thanks to mirror box and multiple burgies, is now easier than ever. So give the deck a try if it seemed fun to you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.